everyone. It's Michael White, and here's my co-host. I'm Samuel Fetis. Good morning uh, to you all. We're here giving you uh, another day. We're here giving you four days this week. Um, as I said, all, most of the topics, all of the topics that we talk about are key components to having a good relationship with yourself and to have a good relationship with others and to actually have success. Mm-hmm. Now, I've said it multiple times, we're not a dating channel. We use our experiences, we do reactions to videos and all those type of things because at the end of the day, we're just here to give you key pieces of information that might help you. Either you might take a few things away from what we teach or you might take away everything, you might take away nothing. That is completely up to you. Um, But we're just here to serve our audience, just like our topic says, servitude. So I think that's super important. Yeah, for sure. And um, I think, again, starting off with what you just said with self-love, it's, you know, we want to be able for people to be able to have that self-love, to have that great relationship with self, to be able to move forward in other relationships to the best of their ability. And it all starts with yourself because you're the one showing up in the relationship in the first place and you're the one waking up to you every morning, right? And going to sleep to you. Exactly. So guys, before we get into today's topic, please like, share and subscribe. We provide all the platforms for you guys to do it. Um, you know, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, we provide all the tools for you guys to follow us on any platform, especially YouTube. Please click it. It's free. We do have a requirement for this channel because we put a lot of love and time into it. So we do have requirement that you do like, share and subscribe. Now, again, if it's content you like, like it. If you don't, that's fine, too. Um, So we're going to talk about today's topic. I'm going to play the video, our promo video, and then we will get started into today's topic. Okay, so let's get into today's topic. Love isn't selfish. It's about servitude. I honestly think this is why a lot of people are falling short in the relationship or in a relationship. Or let's even talk about friendships too. Friendships and relationships because they don't understand what truly loving somebody is. And we've all made that mistake. We all have. We want the love part. But when it comes time for us to do the work, we don't want to do that part. That's the servitude part. That's showing up. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. Let's really get into it. Let's really break it down. When you are engaging with somebody, either as a friend or dating, there are requirements. You, you need to understand that, like, let's say you like this person, like as a friend or a, or as a lover. There are requirements that you are going to have to fulfill on your end. It's a bit like going to work, isn't it, Michael? You're going to have to fulfill certain things to be able to continue with the relationship, in the work relationship with your boss, with the with your co-workers, mm-hmm. with everybody. And if you decide that you're not going to show up anymore, then you're going to be sacked. Or you, you know? or, you, or you even start lacking. And I'm glad that you brought that up because it's like with anything, if you get drafted into the NFL uh nhl anything they have requirements for you to stay on the team Mm -hmm. even the nba you don't just get to show up and just say well i'm in the nba i don't have to do anything i don't have to put points on the board i don't have to do nothing no they recruited you because they saw potential they said this person's a winner there are some requirements and i realize that sometimes in relationships people don't like that they're required to do things Mm. Yeah, and I think it's a massive thing, isn't it? People uh, don't want to do that. Um, and they get a kind of um, upset when the other person says, you know, I need you to be a bit more like you. I need you to show up more. I need you to message me more. And they get in this state of like, who do you think you are to tell me this? They but get defensive. Defensive is the word. Thank you, Michael. They get very defensive. And the thing is, in a relationship, 
you know, you have to listen to your partner. Otherwise, what are you in it for? Why have you bothered with a relationship if you're not going to take that time, if you're not going to listen to your partner and you're not going to work through things together and you're just going to get defensive at all times? And it is a huge thing where people just get defensive. And, and, and you see, like, that's the problem, you see, and I'm glad that we actually brought that up because, again, I feel like this episode specifically is going to help some people. They want the love part. They don't want the servitude part. Yeah. They say, give me all the love. Give me all the attention. Give me all of this. But don't require it from me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As soon, as soon as you open your mouth and you say, well, hey, I need you to pull your weight. I need you. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't know. Like, and it's just like, wow. So then I think really at that point, that's when you really know if somebody's into you. Yeah. And I think you've got to be very, you've got to be very careful that you don't get into a routine of just saying yes for the sake of it or, um, or just kind of stamping your feet to say and get defensive too quick, too soon when you're not giving each other a chance to get to know one another and be able to really understand one another, right? Because um, I think that you've got, the, you've, got the, you've got the problem where people are in a relationship for the wrong reasons and you've got someone very demanding, let's say, and then the other person is just quiet and just goes along with it and then, and then it's one-sided, right? Well, you no, know, now we got to pick that apart. What one person deems uh, demanding another person could say, hey, they're just requiring you to step up. Yeah, and I suppose it depends, again, on, you know, the content of it, of how, what's going on, so. <clears throat> because, the I could say, like, we'll use us, for example. I could say, Anthea, you're too demanding, but then you could say, mm, I don't really think so. You see what I'm saying? Like, we really yeah. have to understand that's why I said with, with relationships, you need to understand what you're entering into, either a friendship when you're dating somebody, because again, you might say, hey, we don't spend enough time together. Oh, you're too demanding. Mm. The per you're just asking the person to fulfill a requirement. Mm. You're saying for me to stay in this relationship, I need for you to spend time. I need us to be intimate. And I'm talking about spending time together not just physical, but spending time together. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of times there's a lot of miscommunication because one person might say, hey, I need you to, to invest more or to show me why you want to be here. And the other person's like, I don't like this. This is controlling because it's a defense mechanism. Now we're getting into the defense mechanism part where they just don't want to be told what to do. They want the love, but they don't want to be told what to do. They, yeah. they they don't want to serve. Yeah, and it, it is, I mean, like, you go back in the day, there was a very clear role between relationships, and it worked really well. It worked really well in one, in one sense, and in the other sense it didn't, because if people were unhappy in a relationship, it was very much, well, that's your business type of thing, you've got to get on with it. There's no, you know, <clears throat> there wasn't a way out back in the day. But now there's way too many options. So people don't stick it through because they know they can go on any social media platform and just flick to the left or flick to the right and kind of start talking to somebody else, you know. And, and get all the love that they want. Yeah, and there's no there's no depth to it anymore. Like not that with anybody, not with everybody. I mean, I'm I'm just saying like there's certain certain situations or certain people or a percentage of people, shall I say, that actually don't have that in depth anymore. They 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 know that they don't have to listen. They they kind of feel like they don't have to listen to anyone because if you don't want to listen to me or you don't want this, I'm gone. I can find someone else. And I think that attitude is where relationships are really falling short, Michael. Because well, see, that's the thing. I think we might have a topic <laughs> there because we need to ask the question: Are you getting in the relationship? Are you dating someone to be happy? Or are you dating someone to be successful? You mm, see, so those are, those are, because that's the thing. You should never date somebody to be happy. No. You should date somebody because you see that there's a possibility for you guys to build, succeed, and actually have a, um, a fruitful relationship. Yeah. And that, that I mean, 
you know what i think this is like we always go i, w- I want to go back to the first thing we're always speaking about is to vet somebody and to spend that time and to get to know you. someone properly right because uh, you know what you know what just came to mind and i i don't know I, I, like it's not something i'm telling people to do but i just thought there's been times where i thought to myself i wish i recorded the conversation just so that i can say this is what we spoke about because a lot of time people go no i didn't say that oh i didn't say i'm going to have the time to be able to be in this relationship i couldn't i didn't say i was going to give you four days um mm. and you go, but yes you did you said like you've got the time for this relationship and now you're saying you don't um well that's so, a very easy thing that i can actually answer watch how they show up and that's it because look i'll give you a beautiful example let's say you're in a relationship right and there's not enough date nights happening right and you've brought it to your partner's attention that you need more date nights so let's say it's friday your partner cancels on you. Hey, babe, I can't make it to dinner tonight because of X, Y, Z, work, whatever, right? This is how you know that the person really wants to serve you, that they respect you, that they like you, that they're interested. They will rebook. And what I mean by that is let's say you cancel on your woman, right? You'll tell her, hey, babe, I can't make it tonight for Friday, but I can make it tomorrow night for Saturday at 2 p.m. Does that work for you? You see, that's how you know if someone likes you. If they just cancel on you and just say, well, I'm sorry, I can't make it. Sorry. They, they have very minimal respect for you. Yeah, but a lot of people make up excuses, especially when one person yeah. likes the other person a lot. Um, and if they really, really are, really like them and, and their partner keeps on cancelling, they will make up excuses to say, oh, yeah, but, you know, he done that or she done that because of this or because of that and there's always an excuse behind it but actually you really need to look at that because well, there's a problem the you you do and that's what i'm saying that's where the fruit is because if you've brought it to their attention and they keep canceling on you but they never rebook they never say babe or honey i'm available tomorrow at this time and day are you free at this time? That is the key component. Do they rebook with you or do they just constantly keep canceling on you? Yeah. You see what Absolutely. I'm saying? Because if they rebook with you, it shows a level of respect. Mm. It shows a level of, yes, I can't make it tonight, but I can make it tomorrow or this time. You see the difference of, of, of them rebooking because they're acknowledging that they canceled on you. They're acknowledging that they won't be able to show up in that moment, but they're willing to show up the next day or whenever scheduled time booked. But if they just flat out cancel on you, sorry, can't make it, with no rebooking, that person, you can clearly see that they have very little respect for you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I think people need to take notice of that and realize that that is what it is and not to try and sugarcoat that and try and give excuses to the other person take it on board and it's not a personal thing i think as i've said this before it's not personal like we've got to really detach ourselves from that from it being personal in the sense of if somebody's not for us and it's not going to work we can't take it that personally and get so caught up in our emotions and our feelings well, it's in the details. That's how I look at it. See, that, <laughs> that was in the details. You mm. watch. Like, let's say Anthea has a man. She tells him, hey, we don't spend enough time together. But he never rebooks with her when to spend time together. You just keep watching. That's it. And then at that point, when you break it off and you say, hey, look, let's, for example, call him John. John, I don't think this is going to work out anymore. He says, why, Anthea? Well, you know, I've given you the opportunity multiple times to um, show up. And you've never taken the initiative to do that. You've never tried to rebook with me. You've never tried to, um, you know, make your weight or whatever. Mm -hmm. You've just canceled, 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 and still expect me to show up. Because that's what I'm saying. It's an acknowledgement and a respect of that individual's time. Mm. That's and, and we've talked about it on the podcast too. When yeah. you're in a relationship, 
you always have to give them context. We have busy lives. It's the same thing. I've told someone this too. If you're in a relationship, there are certain requirements. So let's say, for example, physically, right? Your partner is going to want to have sex with you or engage with you in that way. Now, let's be adults and let's be mature about it. No one's saying that you have to have sex with your partner, but there is a requirement because they are going to want to engage in that with you. Mm. That's what you're signing up for in a relationship because that's going to happen. Now, with that being said, if let's say you're tired from work and you turn your partner down for sex, you need to be considerate and say, hmm, if I turn them down for sex, how is that going to make them feel? Are they going to feel rejected? But I don't want to just say yes, just because they want it. So what you do is you meet them in the middle. Say, babe, I'm a little tired tonight. I can't do it tonight. But can we pencil in um, intimacy or having sex tomorrow at this time? I'm free. You see the difference? There's an acknowledgement of the person's time and respect for them and just saying, I don't want to do it tonight. You don't yeah. you, people need to understand that your words have consequences without context. Yeah, but I think I think if you're if it comes to the bedroom side, if you're I wouldn't want to schedule that in because you've got to be it's got to be a mood thing behind it, unless your man or woman can make you just get into that mood. No, no, but I'm saying like at least at least them letting you know that they have a window when yeah. they're not busy. Yeah, absolutely. Because then in the guy's mind, he might be like, okay, my girl's free from two to four. I can, you know, there's there's time available there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I get it. You know what I mean? Instead of just like we're going to have it at this time at 6.30. Like, no, yeah. but at least, like, you've at least established that she has free time within that window. And that's what I'm trying to say is a lot of people need to understand your context and your words matter. That's what I'm yeah. trying to say is love is not selfish. It's very understanding. But to a degree of if a person keeps canceling on you, they're not being a good friend, they're not showing up, how much understanding can you be? Yeah, absolutely. You've got to, in that sense, you've got to put yourself first because you've got to fulfill you too. Because if it's not working for you and the other person's not participating, then there is no point. Like you're just going to go around in circles over and over and over again. And you're going to stop it's stopping yourself actually meeting someone up who does want to be there and can meet your requirements and you can meet theirs and you can sure. have a you know, a, f a fruitful relationship together. But see, that's what I love because nobody likes that. As soon as you tell them that there are requirements to be here, they don't like that. They're, oh, no, no, they no, don't. no, 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 no. But it's like, no, when you're getting to know someone, they have their requirements and you are going to have requirements of them. Yeah, for sure. That's, for sure. That, that's what it is. When you sign up to be a friend with somebody, you are signing up to show up i think it's i think and, and that's relationships in general isn't it michael with any mm -hmm. like business relationship or all with a it. friendship or with all of it like i know in in our business or in other businesses like there's things that happen or you know life takes a thing on it takes a toll on you or something you know things change but if you're not communicating and you're not showing up at all then where's the business going you know Where's what's happening with your business and that's the same in a relationship what's happening in your relationship and what's happening with that business relationship like you have to have meet those requirements absolutely exactly and and again it's understanding that if you want the love as i always say and it's the best thing to say what are you willing to give to get what you want yeah you don't get to just get what are you willing to give to get what you want? So it's like if you want time, attention, and all those things from somebody, what are you willing to give to get it? Yeah, and if you're not willing to give anything, then don't get into a relationship. No, then you get nothing. Yeah, exactly. You because you, that's why you just don't get into a relationship because there's nothing to come back for you. There's nothing there for you because you're not willing to give anything. You've got to be able to be willing to give something exactly and it will never go full circle if the if it's not a give and take 
Yeah, absolutely. And everything's balanced, isn't it, Michael? If we're just if we're just expecting something just to come because like if we speak about being selfish um and, and saying to yourself, Okay, this is what I want and this is what I demand and and you go into that selfish mode of things, then you're not gonna go nowhere with it. No. You're really not because <sighs> How can you expect to get something in return? It's like if you put yourself in the other person's shoes and then look at it from an outside view, then you'll be able to see what's happening and what's the, what's going on and why it's not going to work. Because you wouldn't have somebody do that to you and stand there and just be happy with it or just say, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll accept being in a relationship with somebody who doesn't want to give nothing to me in any way, shape or form, whether it's time, attention, anything. No um and again i think there is a balance again because if somebody's giving you way too much time and way too much attention and you haven't set your boundaries then that can be a problem too you know so i think it really is communication and understanding one another and meeting each other's needs at the right times as well you know exactly but that's what it comes down to it's that communication and understanding on both ends no matter what you have going on in life you still have an obligation to this relationship yeah absolutely you really do have an obligation to really that's what i mean like like because then it's like why are you in it if you're if you want to fulfill all these other obligations in life but then you still want to get the benefits of being in a relationship without having to serve why are you there just leave yeah yeah absolutely absolutely it's so interesting isn't it like, and clearly, then... like clearly and and this is why it's also important too and stefan talks about this timing Mm, your timing, timing might be wrong for you to date this individual because of what they have going on in their life there mm. is not an opportunity for them to be serving in that relationship absolutely so you also is. gotta look at it from that aspect too is the time aspect that maybe right now is not a good time for you guys to date yeah yeah and again, don't take it personally. This is how the world goes round, you know? That, see, exactly. I don't take it personally. I just observe because, as I said, if I'm dealing with somebody and they don't rebook, they don't say, hey, I'm sorry, and then rebook my time. Because clearly the initial thing is if a person wanted to spend time with you, they clearly see something of value because they've agreed to the agreement in the beginning. But yeah. then they can't commit to the commitment. That's yeah. it happens. Yeah. But then they've never made the time to say, well, hey, I can't commit to this commitment. Let's do it another day. And they don't acknowledge that. And they just say, well, sorry. All they're doing is saying sorry, but not. How does Matthew Hussey says it? He says it the best. There's no like resolution. You see what I'm saying? There's no like progression. Mm. There's no solution. It's like, I'll give you guys a beautiful example that of something he said yesterday. It's like, let's say you break up with someone, right? And they come back into your life and they say, well, I miss you. Um, you know, uh, I care about you. And Matthew Hussey says so. Because where is it going? Where's there the solution? You miss me and what? Are we going to get back together? What is it? Like, what is the purpose of you just calling to interrupt what I have going on in my life yeah. to tell me that you miss me and you care, yeah. but then there's no solution. There's no progression. That's what no. he said. A lot of times they just want to come into your life and say, well, I miss you. Yeah. Because they miss something in that moment and you're familiar mm -hmm. to them. The, yeah. fam the familiarity is what makes it easy to be able to come mm -hmm. back and say that in the first place. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where we really need to stand up for ourselves and not allow that to happen. But that's because, what I'm saying. Where yeah. is the solution? Where are yeah. you calling to tell me this for what? Yeah. Where's like, it going? Yeah, like where is it going? That's what I'm trying to say. Even with this solution, if your partner cancels on you, but they're not like rebooking or anything like that. It's like, where is this going? You said mm. sorry, but what? How are you going to fix this? Mm. And words again, words can be very cheap. So you have to they take can. it, have to, to, yeah, you have to take note of yes, they might say this, but be on your guard, be very aware, be and understand and watch and really watch to see how they turn up again because, exactly. you know. 
people people do like to manipulate Michael. People do like to do things that just to get what they want in those moments. Well, um, that's why you pull back. Because if somebody, as you said, if their words are not matching their actions and they're just telling you, sorry, 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 sorry. Honestly, that's when you start to pull back because you're starting to see that this investment, let's call it that, is not really worth it. Because, and this is where the um, level of awareness comes in, right? Because again, this is why I say these certain things are so important because you, we know guy or girl that there's been people in the past where they would show, and these people would say not all of them were trash but let's say like we'll call them chads or tyrones or whatever those dudes were trash or let's call them jessica and sally for a guy they had no problem showing up for those per person even though they weren't reciprocative they had no problem showing up for those people at all but with you it's a problem yeah exactly I can exactly. only speak for myself, but like I know girls that have like showing up for guys, driving at his house at three in the morning, um, you know, washing his clothes, doing his laundry, all these things, and they're not even in a committed relationship with this individual. They might be having sex with them, but they're not even in a committed relationship. But then they'll get into a relationship with someone else and they don't even do half those things anymore. Yeah. 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 Because they use their past as a reason to why they shouldn't show up for the person in the present. Mm. it's not even that they show their past it all it shows is that the person they're with currently they don't have that burning desire for them yeah exactly because why is it that the, the, the chad guy and again maybe you could speak for for guys because again you've seen it from the guy point of view is why is it that this guy who's not committing to you isn't giving you direction you want to do his laundry you want to drive to his house at 3 a.m you have sex with him you do all of these things for him, but then the guy that comes into your life that's a good man, shows up, does these things, you don't want to do half of those things. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? A little strange. So maybe you can give it from the guy point of from the guy point of view of you've seen guys do so much for a woman and never and have it and have it be the same scenario. Well, I find it interesting because I don't know I, I really don't know what the what the answer to that is i think it well i say i don't know the answer it's more to i think it's to do with um if somebody when asked i think i said earlier on when you really like somebody and they're not committing then the woman or the man will try and do more to try and get them to commit mm -hmm. so they will show up because there's, there's like um you're chasing something but when someone shows up it becomes easy and and becomes lazy because it's like well it's here i don't have to do nothing for it mm. right so that's why there's a lot of people that can keep that string going and and keep that dragging along for a very long time because the other person who really likes them and wants to be committed will go along like a little puppet as such to just co try and get there and try and get them to want to commit but mm -hmm. um eventually it's gonna it will it will break down eventually because there's only so much anyone can take everyone's got a threshold and that's the great thing about us as humans is everyone has that threshold it might take someone a year two years three years sometimes even 10 years but they will hit that at some point now when you get with somebody and it's very easy i think a lot of people will just sit back and not give that time and attention because they've got it Mm. they don't feel like they need to do anything anymore but that's where actually it's the wrong mindset in the sense of that's going to come to a point where the other person again is going to hit their threshold and say well you know we've been together for x amount of time and you've given no effort and see, so that's I don't, thing, it shouldn't have to go that far it shouldn't have to go no it shouldn't have to go that far but i think that's the difference i think that's where the problem that's where it sits is is where somebody is really wanting something and they're not getting it so they keep trying 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 but someone's no, getting don't. something right it's just too easy they got it and then they don't give any if, they don't try if anything they don't, if they don't want to give it let them go yeah absolutely because absolutely. i'm telling because i'm telling you guys i've seen guys and i've been one of these guys where you want you like a girl or you think she's attractive and you're trying everything in the book 
to get that girl's attention. Everything in the book, you're showing up, you're, you're commenting, you're engaging, you're doing all of these things to show up for this woman. And obviously she's going to take the attention. It's free. Mm -hmm. For she sure. She's going to be like, damn, like this guy. But then think about it. You know that there's a Chad or a guy in her life that puts in very minimum effort and he gets all of her attention. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I'm saying that in retrospect, you need to be very aware. It's so important to see situations for what they are, not for what you want them to be. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of people see the disconnect. They, they, they'll, they'll paint a picture in the head of what they want it to be instead of looking at the reality of what it is. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I so agree with that. That's, that's, a, that's a big thing that happens out here, actually. Is, is being able to acknowledge a situation and be like, this is what it is. Sometimes people will come back in our life just for us to heal and that's it. It doesn't mean you need to get back together. Yes. It just means like, let's say, for example, you guys had like a weird breakup. And then this person calls you or you call them. You guys have like a healing moment. Hey, I acknowledge that I wasn't doing this. I acknowledge this. And that's it. And that's what it's supposed to be. Mm. It's not a sign for you guys to get back together. It's not a mm -hmm. sign for you guys to be together. It's just a moment of acknowledgement. That's it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Let it go. You don't try to force it. You don't try to get back with them. You don't try to be with them. You, this is what it is. It's a healing moment. Yeah. Because there's been some people in my life where I'm like, man, I wish I could just have like a final conversation with them, kind of get everything Close out. Close it. Closing and then move on. Yeah. And I, you know what? It's very true because I done that with somebody and um, I just sent a message actually just to say, and I actually stated in the message, this isn't, this isn't for a reaction and this isn't for you for anything. This is for me, part of my healing process. So please, like you don't, I don't expect that I didn't expect a response and I actually stated I can't remember how I said it um but I acknowledged my faults let's say within the relationship mm -hmm. and I and for it to be closure I may be able to have a very clear mind and be able to walk forward I felt I needed to do that but I didn't feel I needed to actually speak to them I just needed to put it out there whether they read it whether they didn't read it whether they just see the message and deleted it I didn't care it was just for me to know that I've acknowledged something about myself and I need, this is my part of my healing process. And then that's that. And my goodness, it, what a, what a feeling. I felt so good for it. It was closure and I could literally leave it to be my past and learn from what I'd done or, or what, how I participated and how I showed up to be able to move forward. And that's what it is because sometimes you'll never get that closure. So sometimes yeah. you still have to be content of just that's what it is. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes you just have to be like, there. there's nothing more to it. This is what it is. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, that's why, as I said, it's so important to have a heightened level of awareness. I do. Um, and every day focus on that. So like even... On our podcast, I think for this season, we're going to be talking about a healthy attachment and healthy detachment, which I think is a very, very important subject to have um, with with people. Because, yes. um, again, I don't want to get too in it because I want it to be a surprise. But, um, you know, we also have to talk about trauma bonding. we got a lot of great topics to talk about. Yeah. But as I said, at the end of the day, we need to understand a few things. We need to understand that love isn't selfish. There's no room for it. It's about servitude and how, and how much are you willing to serve this person, but understanding in the context that it's you two serving each other. Yes. It is a, one mutual, side. It's yes. a mutual agreement where both people are going to serve each other. Now, again, you see, this is where the feeling aspect comes into it. Based on based off of how much you like that person and how much they like you is going to be dependent on how much they want to serve you. Yeah. Because, as, we, because as we've always said in the, in the relationship context, when you're dating someone, you're dating them to make them a wife or a husband at some point. So you're dating yeah. them not just to be a girlfriend. You're dating them to be an end goal, a purpose. Yeah. Right? And when you've got a purpose, what a difference, huh? 
exactly. So you have you have good intentions with this individual, right? But then at the end of the day, you also have to look at it is how much do they like you? Because that's the thing, as I said, and we used reference points of again, and I'll use it from the girl point of view. There's been there's been girls where you could tell this girl likes a guy. Like he's like come over 3 a.m. She's like, no problem. Mm. Do this, no problem. She's very cooperative. But then let's say we'll take new guy Johnny. She's not that cooperative. She's disagreeable. Everything's a fight. Clearly, she doesn't like him that much. And that's the yeah. difference because she knows that with bad boy Chad, he'll just leave and find someone else. He'll just be like, you don't want to be cooperative? That's not my problem. I'll leave. You clearly don't like me that much. But then good guy Johnny, she know good, good guy Johnny will put up with it. Good yeah. guy Johnny will tolerate it. So then she doesn't feel like that. Oh, you know, I can do X, Y, and Z. Sense of urgency in some way. Exactly. Yeah. And it's the same thing, um, vice versa, if it was a guy. So that's why I'm just telling you guys, be self-aware. Have the understanding. And things are actually pretty black and white. It's just our feelings confuse them. Yeah. Good and I, I always like to say this, don't chase the rainbow. Look at things for what they are with somebody. Don't be chasing the pot of gold because they're never going to give it to you. You know how a rainbow always moves all the time? It's the yeah. same thing with this. Like when you're dealing in a relationship with somebody, and I hate to say this, you shouldn't have to chase somebody to get their time, attention, and energy and reciprocated efforts. If you have to chase them down, time, attention, and energy, it, it's not clearly not the relationship for you or friendship for you. So then at that point, as I said, there's other people out there that will be more cooperative and agreeable. Yeah, for sure. I'm not Don't waste your time, you, guys. I'm not telling you to be hopping from person to person, but I'm just trying to tell you to acknowledge on what you're dealing with with certain people when it comes down to that. Don't chase somebody down just to get their love and attention. No. If they don't want to give it, acknowledge it, move on. Yep. Otherwise, you're putting yourself in a very vulnerable position and allowing exactly. yourself to get hurt, and then you're gonna then you want to blame the other person, but it's not about the other person. It's you haven't set your boundaries, you haven't stood your ground, and you've worked alongside it. So you have to take notice of that. You have to be aware of that, and you will have a better life in general in that kind of sense, well, right? Even, well, even with that, let's say hypothetically somebody cancels on you, you don't want to be like you canceled on me, blah blah blah. blah. As I said, the best thing you can do if someone cancels on you, watch them. That's it. They've canceled on you. You've, you've made it a mental note. And you're not putting bullets in the gun because I know that we've talked about it on the podcast before. Don't do that. Watch them. Don't ask them to hang out again. Don't ask them to, especially if you're in a relationship, don't ask again. Because you shouldn't have to ask multiple times. Sit back and watch. And if you see that the person's not making any amounted effort or rebooking dates or anything of the sort, you know where you stand with that individual. Clearly, you have a clear picture of where you stand with them because clearly they don't care about you that much. Clearly, they don't um, value you that much because if someone tells you that they value you, there should be an action. There should be a follow-up to show that they do. I agree. Totally agree. There should be an end thing at the end, like, okay, I care about you. Um, this is how I'm willing to show up. Yeah. You've got to take notice of people's actions, not just the word. You have to take notice again, of people's actions. But again, people don't like that because when you hold them to a standard, now this person is held responsible for something, and people don't like that. That's no, the they thing. Don't. They don't want to be held responsible it's like they'll say oh this person will be my friend even though i'm flaky even though i cancel even though i do this and do that and whatever but that's what i'm saying when you hold them to a standard now it's like for you to i used a beautiful example yesterday on the podcast it's like look at yourself as a shop right you own a store and we'll call it like because your store is your life right 
So what you're doing is when you're letting this person in your store, they're coming in, they're canceling on you, they're not rebooking, they're not respecting you, anything like that. Every day what you're doing when you're standing behind that counter, you're just saying, oh, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll let you cancel on me tomorrow. I'll let you do this to me tomorrow. Um, I'll let you not show up tomorrow. I'm going to let you steal my time tomorrow. And you're just mm -hmm. waving every day in the shop, just and knowing that this person's going to do that to you every time they come in the shop. So it's like, as I said, the best thing to do is acknowledge it. And, and finally, because like, you know, on shops, how they have that sign where it says we're closed. It, you have to get to a point where eventually you turn the sign and the person comes in the next day and they say, hey, why is the door locked? Why can't I come in the shop today? You're, 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 you've been revoked. Your access has been revoked. You can't come here no more. You know what I mean? I've given you more than enough time and opportunity to fix it. I've watched, I've seen, and I can't have you keep stealing from me all the time, either time, attention, not showing up or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Because what, they, what a lot of people don't understand is when you leave your life open, like a store, and this person comes in, you're holding them to a standard when they come in your store that they won't steal your time, that they won't, that they'll be respectful, um, you know, that they'll show up in an appropriate way. Every time they, 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 they take from you or they don't respect you or any of those things like that, they're taking from the shelf and then they're leaving the store and you're saying, bye. But think about it. Ask yourself this question. I really want you, who has to replenish the shelves? Not them. You. You. Yeah. Absolutely. You have to replenish the shelf. So every day they come back and they're taking from the shelf and they're taking and they're taking and they're taking. You have to keep putting the stuff back on the shelf. But how much stock do you have in the back before eventually you run out and say, I don't have anything left. You check out of the relationship. You stop wanting to try. You're tired. You you don't want to um, engage anymore. Eventually you're just like, I, I'm, I'm beat. Yeah, and don't let it get to that. That's the, that's the point. Don't let it get to that. It shouldn't get to that point. At some point, you should say, store closed, access revoked. Because, mm -hmm. you, want, because you want people in your shop that are going to take, but are also going to pay. Yeah, for and sure. And what I mean is pay with servitude. They're going to say, oh, I, I, I want love and attention from your shop. I want X, Y, Z from your shop. They come to you at the counter and say, hey, this is what I'm willing to give to get this. So it's a healthy exchange. Yes. 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 That was a very good analogy. It's a good way to explain so, it. That's how I look at it. Some people, their access needs to be revoked, guys. You need to understand that. No matter what you do, there's nothing you can do. Some people, you just need to revoke their access. So, look, I won't keep you guys any longer. We won't keep you any longer. Uh, but we will see you guys on Monday. Yes. Uh, we, have a, we have a good topic lined up. Our good... We lined up for next week, and then we actually have a special guest on Friday, so you don't want to miss that. I'm um, talking about uh, finances and relationships. So, excellent. Um, we will talk to you guys and see you guys Monday afternoon at five fifteen. You have a fantastic weekend, guys. Thoroughly enjoy, and we'll see you on Monday. Thank All you. Right, take care. Take care. Bye bye.